How's it going everybody and welcome back to another video. So, with the release of ED4 and Zamorak being released, uh, quite a lot of items have been going up and down. So today I thought I might as well go over a few of the items that have gone up in price by quite a lot, uh, which has made quite a lot of these older sort of money making methods um, kind of buffed. Today I thought I would just go over a couple of them and uh, hopefully you guys can take advantage while the items are still high. So if this is the kind of content that you do enjoy, then do give the video a like, dislike it if you dislike it, and if you are new, then please do subscribe. We also have a Discord, so the link for that will be down in the description. And as usual, a very special thank you to my channel members, In It Yeah, Lady Evie, and Avian Prime. Thank you guys so much for the extra support on the channel, it means an absolute ton. With all that being said, let's get into the video. Alright, so let's start off with an extremely easy boss to do. It takes very little effort to do, and some of the rewards from it are extremely expensive. Now the boss that I'm talking about, of course, is Croesus, uh, which is one of the four Elder God Wars dungeon bosses, and uh, it has some pretty good rewards as drops. It can end up dropping you the offhand skilling items, which are pretty good for mining and woodcutting. The Scripture of Bic, which is just an absolute game changer for anyone that is a clue scroller like myself. And it can also drop the Crit Bloom armor, which is a very good mage tank armor that uh, quite a lot of people use at uh, quite a lot of high-end stuff. So yeah, it is pretty desirable and uh, its price definitely reflects that. So this armor was pretty expensive regardless before um, Zamorak was released. So the three most expensive pieces of Crit Bloom armor are the helm, the top and the bottoms. Uh, all of these are worth quite a good chunk of money, and uh, before Zamorak was released, they were still pretty expensive. However, they have gone up an absolute ton. So, if I can remember correctly, before Zamorak, the bottoms were going for about, uh, I think, 500 to 600 mil. Uh, the top was going for something like 600 to 700 mil, and the helmet was, I think, around 300. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's about where they were sort of pre Zamorak release. However, at the time of recording this, the bottoms are going for about 750 to 800 mil. Uh, the top is going for anywhere sort of between 800 and 900 mil, and the helm is going for about 550 to sort of 600 mil. Um, so that is a huge, huge increase uh, just because of a boss release. And uh, yeah, it is definitely the items that you want to be trying to go for when you're going at this boss. Now, we actually managed to get super, super lucky at, uh, at Croesus, uh, which is not normal. I, I'm pretty unlucky here normally, uh, but we ended up getting two broadcasts here uh, in not a lot of kills while I was getting footage for this video. And uh, one of them was the bottoms, which is obviously one of the big three items that we wanted to get. And uh, we managed to sell those for about 790 million GP. Uh, so yeah, we made pretty good money there. And uh, we also managed to get the Spore Hammer, uh, which I think the G value says it's around 80 mil. Um, however, I'm pretty sure that it doesn't sell for that. I think it's around sort of more 55 to 60. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still another broadcast and it's another 60 mil if it does sell for that. Now, considering how easy Croesus is, uh, I would say definitely go and attempt to try and get something here. It's uh, really, really easy to do. Obviously, doing it in a farm man, you're going to get more um, rolls on the loot uh, and more likely to get something. However, public usually isn't too too bad. You might get the odd troll here and there, but uh, generally it goes pretty smooth. And uh, yeah, I've got all of these items in uh, in public, so yeah, definitely, definitely recommend. Alright, so next up we are going to have a look at the Hexed Weapons, which is going to cover the Hex Hunter Bow, the Inquisitor Staff, and the Pterosaur Maul. So these are all tier 80 weapons, however when used against the correct um, style of combat, they become a tier 97. Uh, so they become really, really powerful. Now the reason that these have been buffed is because the uh, slivers that you can get from the Demon Invasion and in ED4 they create enchantments that basically give these an extra 5% damage. Now, I'm pretty sure from what I've heard, that turns them from a tier 97 all the way up to a tier 101 damage, which is pretty insane. So I can see why, obviously, you know, people have been wanting to get these. 
So I am going to split these off slightly um, as one of them kind of has two money makers involved in it that have been buffed uh, and you'll see what I mean when we get there. So we are going to start off with the Inquisitor staff and the Terrasar Maul. Now don't get me wrong, these do have some pretty high requirements. So for the Inquisitor staff, you will need level 114 to be able to make it. However, to acquire the pieces, you do not need that level. Um, any of the ex uh, excavation spots in Alcarid uh, will essentially let you get one of these at a super super rare 1 in 3 million. Um, however, when the pylons are active, that does go down to a 1 in 1 million. Uh, obviously, that is still not super good odds. Now, where these odds start coming down quite significantly are at the level 107, 114 and 118 spots. When the pylons are inactive, the level 107 is a 1 in 300k. The 114 is a 1 in 225k and the level 118 is a 1 in 150k, which obviously again is still not super good odds. However, when the pylon is active, the 107 spot becomes a 1 in 90k, the 114 spot becomes a 1 in 67.5k, and the 118 spot becomes a 1 in 45k. Which, again, they are much better than obviously 1 in 3 million, um, but they're still pretty rare. But the thing I like about these um, dropping from this is basically that you, you'd be there anyway just grinding out for um, collections and levels anyway. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you'll get one of these as you do it. Uh, but these have gone up significantly. So as of recording this, uh, the Inquisitor staff is going for about 320-ish mil. Um, I'm pretty sure before uh, Zamorak and this whole buff to it came out, I think they were going for about 250, um, so they've gone up a little bit. Um, I would definitely say they've gone up enough to say that they've essentially been buffed. Um, so whenever you get one of those pieces, they're sort of over 100 mil now, which is pretty good considering you know you'll get them just as you're training uh, archaeology. Next up, we have the Terrasal Mall, which you get from doing Big Game Hunter. Now, again. This is not super low requirements. Um, you to get all three of these pieces, you will need level 96 hunter. Um, however, you can get one of them at 94, one of them at 95, and one of them at 96. So the items that you're looking for are the tribal fin, the volcanic fragments, and the superior longbone. Now these come from the tier three dinosaurs in Big Game Hunter, and they all drop at a one in 1,000. Um, so. Obviously not super common, but if you get one, they are worth an absolute ton right now. So right now the Terrasaur Mall is going for about 650 mil, which is super, super high from what it was before. Um, and basically it means that any of these three pieces is pretty much worth about 200 and, well, I don't know, 250 mil or so. Yeah, that probably maths out right. And uh, yeah, that is just super super expensive compared to what they were before. Now I'm pretty sure just before Zamorak came out this was going for about 200 and uh, maybe 20 mil or so for the whole um, for the whole Terrasaur Mall which you know basically meant all of these pieces were about 70 mil or so each before. Um, so yeah it's gone up like nearly nearly threefold. It's really really expensive now. So. 100% recommend doing Big Game Hunter. You know, it's really good for XP and obviously super, super good for money right now. Uh, and you can always possibly get a Dragomatic along the way. I know they're not worth a lot, but you know, it's extra money, so uh, yeah, definitely recommend. All right, and finally we go on to the Hex Hunter bow, which is the most expensive of the three weapons. Now, like I said, this one kind of has two different money makers that have been buffed from this, and I'll explain why in just a second. Now to get a hex on a bow, the requirements are pretty high again. Uh, you do need level 99 Slayer because they are dropped from Soul Gazers. Now you find Soul Gazers in Zamorak's hideout. There is a room that has um, some, uh, some Seekers in there and at the other side of the room there are the Soul Gazers. Now 
the ordinary soul gazer you are very very unlikely to ever get a hex on a bow from they drop them in a one in 1.5 million which obviously is uh, not very very good odds and pretty unlikely to ever get one from a normal soul gazer However, when you do kill a Soul Gazer, there is a 1 in 50 chance to, for it to spawn an Elite version. Now, the Elites have a drop rate of the Hex on a Bow of a 1 in 1.5k, which is honestly not too bad. However, obviously, like I said, it's a 1 in 50 chance to spawn one, um, so you're going to be killing probably about 75,000 of these uh, Soul Gazers in total to, uh, to actually get maybe on drop rate, which honestly doesn't sound very good. However, there is a extremely small chance that when you spawn an elite, it will become a named version. Uh, it will be like Veil Ripper something. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. I'll put it on screen. Um, I don't want to butcher that name. Uh, however, if you do get this named elite, it is a guaranteed drop. As long as you kill it, it is a 100% chance to drop. So yeah, every time you get an elite, you get a pretty kind of good chance at a 1.5k chance to get it, uh, which is kind of good. Um, and obviously that extremely rare chance that you'll get a uh, named elite to spawn and get one for yourself 100% of the time. Now, like I mentioned, when you first come into this room, you will also see the mobs that are called Seekers. Now, these are only a level 71 Slayer creature, which means that, honestly, you could get that at a pretty... You know, it wouldn't take very long to get level 71 Slayer. Now, the reason that these are so good is because these drop a item called a Seeker's Charm, which, like I said before, the Soul Gazers, you, every time you kill one, you have a 1 in 50 chance for it to spawn an Elite. Now, what the Seeker's Charm does is, when you consume one of these, it will turn that into a 1 in 10 chance. Now, this does only last for 10 kills, so essentially, one Seeker's Charm should be one Elite Spawn on average. So before this buff, I think the Seeker's Charm was going for about 200k or round about there. And at the moment they are going for about 400. They might be going for even more than that right now. Uh, I haven't bought any in a while. Um, but yeah, G price right now is about 400k, which is basically doubled it. So. If you're only level 71 Slayer, or you're not quite 99, you can always take advantage of killing these, and uh, yeah, getting some money from that. Now going back to the Hex Hunter bow, at the moment it is going for about 730 mil, which is pretty good. Um, I know that it did go higher than this uh, like just before release, because people were kind of anticipating it to be super, super good. It did come back down to earth a little bit, however, I'm pretty sure beforehand it was about 400 to 500 mil or something like that. Um, so it's still gone up like at least 200 mil plus. So this item, definitely recommended. And doing it with Seeker's Charms, I'll take that uh, 75k kills down to roughly 15k, which is still quite a lot um, on average to get one, but you never know, right? You, you, you could get lucky and uh, you could get that, uh, that name delete. Alright, so I think this video is starting to get a bit long already, so uh, we'll probably call it there for these buffed money makers. There are other ones out there for you to take advantage of, uh, you've just got to kind of go and find them. Uh, maybe we'll make another video on one of those, uh, but we'll, we'll see how this one does. But to pretty much sum up this video, go do Croesus and go get the hexed weapons. They are <laughs> really good money at the moment. Uh, Croesus definitely, it's super easy to do, super, well it's not quite AFK, but it's pretty AFK-ish. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, good rewards. And all of the hex weapons are pretty pretty chill to get as well, uh, just if you're training and stuff. So yeah, definitely go do them. So if you did end up enjoying this video, then do give it a like, dislike it if you dislike it, and if you are new, then please do subscribe. And as usual, I will catch you in the next one.